this is Mike from fearshop.com. Make sure you like this video and leave your comments. Also, subscribe to the channel and set up notifications so you know when the next video drops. Let's get into it. Today we're talking about the top 10 found footage horror movies. Before we get into the top 10 list, let's let, have a look at some of the honorable mentions. Troll Hunter from 2010. Falling somewhere between a fantasy film and a horror movie, 2010's Troll Hunter follows a trio of documentary film students who track an alleged bear poacher, but end up running across a bigger threat. Written and directed by Andre Overdahl, Troll Hunter earned a Best International Film nomination at the Saturn Awards and won honors at both the Norwegian International Film Festival and the Newport Beach Film Festival. Next up is The Visit from 2015. Given his career-spanning love for flashy perceptual tricks, it's surprising that M. Night Shyamalan didn't indulge in the found footage genre any earlier than this 2015 low-budget hit. Honestly though, very little of The Visit's power comes from how it deploys its handheld camera. The presence is neatly justified by the choice to make teen siblings Beckon Tyler an aspiring documentarian and an embarrassing YouTube rapper, respectively. Uh, instead, Shyamalan situates his horror in the very identifiable childhood discomfort of being transplanted from familiar rhythms of home into weird rules and rituals of a distant and often much older relative. It's a sort of anxiety that horror is perfectly suited to escalate into an outright nightmare, a trick that would just well in more traditionally filmed movie. Although Shaman doesn't does grant himself at least one big show off sequence in the form of a game of crawl space hide and seek that gets a lot more tense once Nana decides to get involved. The taking of Deborah Logan. Taken of Deborah Logan is one of the most potent investigations of the agonies of growing old since some more. It just happens to marry those insights into a squirm-inducing supernatural horror story. An eager grad student sets out to document the effects of advanced Alzheimer's on a kindly old woman. And for its first hour, Deborah Logan gets a lot of mileage out of the possibility that the strange things happening are nothing more than a result of all too human ailment that can affect anyone. So when the pivot happens, it feels all the more cathartic as a payoff for how much time the film's invested in its likable characters, plausible setup, and potent meditation on aging and death. More horror films, found footage or not, uh, should work so hard to earn their third acts. I'll be honest, I was quite surprised that this didn't break my top 10 because I really dig this movie. Next up is Lake Mungo from 2008, directed by Joel Anderson. This is a little seen Australian found footage feature that deserves closer examination and deep respect. Joel Anderson's first and still only film combines classic horror tropes in a haunted house with some wrenching family drama and adds in a generous dollop of understandable pessimism to the entire affair. Teenager Alice Palmer has drowned, leaving her family shattered and compelling her brother Matthew to set up cameras around the house to capture her ghost. What follows from there is just a, a smart movie that you know just plays it in terms of medium and mystery the ending it's a solid finale for the film uh some people like this movie a lot more but still i mean it's just it's one of my top honorable mentions now to get into our top 10 list number 10 cannibal holocaust from 1980 by ruggiero diodato the salo of found footage horror movies uh, Diodato's grotesque provocation follows a team of anthropologists who journey to the Amazon rainforest in search of missing filmmakers. Uh, no surprise in a movie called Cannibal Holocaust that when the reels of footage are discovered, Diodato's movie transforms into a film of grisly imagery from a horrific on-camera rape to a cavalcade of animal deaths, most of which were unstaged. To this day, the shock value of the movie often obscures its social commentary that the movie was trying to do. Number 9, The Last Broadcast from 1998. 
If you haven't heard of the last broadcast and you enjoy found footage horror movies, it's time for you to watch the last broadcast. It's a hidden gem of the 90s indie horror that was way ahead of its time. Directors Stefan Avalos and Lance Wheeler adopt the documentary approach to tell the fictional story of public assets television hosts who were killed in their quest to discover the mythical Jersey Devil. Before you can say the Blair Witch Project, look at the release date. Last broadcast was released a full year before Blair Witch, and over the decades has suffered from Blair Witch's blockbuster, blockbuster success. Number 8, Creep, from 2014. There's really nothing scarier than the idea of a psycho lurking around on Craigslist. That's the premise for 2014's Creep, which stars Mark Duplass as Joseph a man who claims to be dying and wants to create a video series for his unborn son. He hires Aaron, played by Patrick Bryce, to film, and things get really weird. Creep explores our need to be polite in social situations and how that need can come at a price of our own safety. Joseph seems like a kind and genuine person, but anyone can seem to be anything when there's someone you know from the internet. The film isn't gory and it doesn't exist on jump scares. Instead, Creep finds a way to get under your skin because Duplass is so incredible at playing somebody who comes off as both sincere and mildly repugnant. And there's the line that Aaron is afraid to cross. Number 7, The Bay from 2012. Some rolled their eyes when Barry Levinson, the acclaimed director of Diner and Rain Man, revealed he was making a found footage horror film. Others were curious to see what little prestige could do for the subgenre. The Bay is an immersive portrait of an East Coast resort town plagued by a flesh eating virus. It you know, does feel different, veering away from claustrophobic single camera approach of its predecessors in an effort to push the limits of the era's technology. Levinson and writer Michael Wallach pieced together footage from iPhones, laptops, security cameras, TV reports. Uh, for a narrative that, that divides its focus amongst a number of well-drawn characters who represent the various scientific, societal, and governmental factors responsible for the disaster. Levinson's more concerned with message than scares. The Bay began as a document documentary around environmental damage in the Chesapeake Bay. Can't tell you how, how much I really do enjoy the Bay I, I think I enjoy it a lot more than a, a lot of other people do. It's a really good film. Number six, The Sacrament from 2013. Uh, Ty West broke out with 2009's stylish 80s throwback House of the Devil, recently forayed into genre television with Wayward Pines and The Exorcist, The Passage, and Chambers. Uh, his 2013 found footage thriller, The Sacrament, Anchored by a charismatic performance by Gene Jones as the leader of the death cult Eden Parish, is a gory, unnerve-shredding, uh, dread-infused reinvention of the Jonestown Massacre from 1978, where nearly a thousand acolytes of the People's Temple drank the proverbial Kool-Aid and dropped dead. In the sacrament, A.J. Bowen and Joe Swanberg play vice journalists who set out to investigate a hush-hush sober living community founded by a religious leader. Packed with other indie faves such as Amy Seamitz, Kentucker Audley, and Caitlin Scheel, the film develops into a truly sickening third act. It's a set piece where one by one, the parish's followers and its intruders ingest a cyanide-laced beverage and proceed to die elaborately horrible deaths. Great movie. I cannot say I'm the biggest fan of Ty West, I think, Overall, some of the films were highly overrated, uh, but The Sacrament is the one that's probably rated lower than some of the other films and is by far, to me, his best film. Number five, The Last Exorcism from 2010. Last Exorcism combines found footage genre with the possession movie to impressive effect. Produced by Eli Roth and focuses on a priest who's lost his faith and makes a living by performing fake exorcisms on the mentally ill. This leads him to a girl called Nell, who claimed to be inhabited by a demonic entity called Abalam. 
the whole thing is caught on camera by a pair of documentary filmmakers. And much of the film plays around with the possibility that Nell is simply disturbed rather than possessed. It's a smart shocker that deals with questions of faith and belief, as well as delivering some intense and scary scenes. The twist ending is, is just killer. Can't, can't even describe how much I do appreciate The Last Exorcism. I am definitely in the minority on that one, though. Number four, Cloverfield from 2008. Hard to believe how long ago Cloverfield was. Uh, this is one of the few big budget found footage films that initially conceived as a blockbuster. Matt Reeves' second feature film ably utilized many of the lessons that made smaller films so successful, from a smart marketing campaign to assembling a cast of characters to care about even in the midst of these outsized circumstances. The film is set in New York City, and it's a story of a group of friends expected to outlast a terrible night and a story's tall Godzilla wannabe. Tearing through the steadily ruined city, the group is forced to deal with problems large in the monsters and small in small monsters. And the tension and terror never quite let up. Even more thrilling, uh, Reeves did not go for happy endings. Number three, Paranormal Activity by Oren Pelly from 2007. While the Blair Witch Project spawned tons of imitators, no other film captured the possibilities of found footage and the inherent terror of the real until a decade later when Oren Pelly shot his chilling spin on a haunted house thriller. Made on shoestring budget and with a tiny crew, Pelly's feature follows a young couple whose lives are forever altered by the unknown lurking in their San Diego home. While the franchise has become watered down, Paranormal Activity freaked out audiences around the world and pulled in nearly $200 million in the process. Number 2, Wreck, by Jomi Bolangero and Paco Plaza from 2007. Before the shot-for-shot -shot American remake Quarantine, this claustrophobic Spanish found footage effort brought a fresh dose of claustrophobic and terror to the zombie genre. A TV reporter and her cameraman are conducting a routine interview at a local fire station when an emergency call comes in. Accompanying the firefighters to a nearby apartment, the news team begins recording the blood curdling screams coming from inside an elderly woman's unit. After authorities seal off the building to contain the threat, the news crew, firefighters, and residents are stuck facing a lethal terror inside. With the camera running, survival for everyone involved seems unlikely. Wreck is quite unsettling as it moves at a restless clip, using the found footage device to inject a new kind of horror into the zombie genre. The plot's simple enough and the cast is filled with stock characters, but the film overcomes the typical horror tropes with amazing execution, including the absence of any music on the soundtrack until the end. And number one is the Blair Witch, Blair Witch Project. Uh, you know, found footage films don't exclusively belong to the horror genre. Some film historians say that the first found footage film was an experimental film by Shirley Clark about drug addicts. But the technique has become so prevalent within the genre. The Blair Witch Project changed the game in horror movies and set a trend that many hate. But to be honest, it just works so well for this film. The great trick of found footage, sometimes, just sometimes, if the films are really good and the people behind them are really adept at getting into the gag, they can convince their audience that this truly is real world they're watching on the big screen. With an ill-fated movie that ended in a haunted forest, found footage is arguably at its best when towing the fine line between fantasy and reality, bending it until it disappears. This is where the Blair Witch Project truly succeeded. They had a lot of people believing that the story was real, and this truly was found footage that we were watching. It was crazy, so many people fell for it. It was pretty much how I looped people into wanting to watch it. They're like, oh yeah, of course I wanna watch it, it's a true story. So, it was amazing marketing campaign, and the movie matched up. One of the greatest endings of all time, too. 
All right, so that wraps this one up. I want to hear from you. Post your top 10 found footage horror movies in the comments. Let me know which movies in my list you agree with and which ones you disagree with. That's it for this episode. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you share this video. Make sure you subscribe. But most of all, make sure you keep it horror.